You didn't catch it. He said, my strength is made perfect. It matures. It gets through the maturation process. That my strength is turned up to 10 when yours is all the way to zero. Now, if you want to play the numbers game, go, go ahead go ahead now and crank your strength up to one. What it does is it, it, it cranks mine down to nine. Then you crank yours up to two, mine crank cranks back to eight. If you're going to let me be me in your life, you're going to have to let me be me in your life. I'm, I ain't going to be long. I promise I'm going to get out of here. So be strong, he said. He, he says, he says, kratio, kratio. It means I'll strengthen you. It means I'll strengthen you. It won't be in your own strength so you can, so you can be arrogant because I set you up in a situation where I resist the proud, but I give grace unto the humble. And what happens is I have to keep those that I preordained and predestinated, those that I have hidden in me before the foundation of the world, who now I sent a word, they became the word I sent, and it can't come back to me void. It has to accomplish that that I sent it. Those folks, I hasten that word to perform it. So in other words, I can't resist what I sent, so I have to keep the container humiliated. Now, the Bible said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. The humbling of oneself comes from a realization of the humility that God has given us as a gift. It is amazing how you can get a word for somebody else when they need it, but you can't get one for yourself. I wish I could buy a minute to push me better in here. It's amazing how in this hour now, it seems hard to be able to focus and God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What are you saying for me? And you can't hear nothing for yourself, but you always got encouragement for somebody else. He always speaks to you a scripture for somebody else. You always can help them get through. You can be a blessing to them while you secretly, silently suffer as anointed as you are. I got five minutes. I wish, it, and I'm, I'm, if y'all don't push me, it's going to turn into four. Okay. Yeah, yeah. While well, you're sitting there trying to figure out, God, what do you want me to do in this season? What do you want to happen in my life? And why, 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 why am I privately illuminated and secretly dry and struggling? And I encourage others, but discourage myself. I speak life to other people, and yet I struggle in my own internalization of my own thoughts thoughts that ensnare me to the degree that I don't even believe you're with me. I know I'm talking right. The rest of y'all, that's real deep. Just keep being deep. But there's a few of us in here understand that it will not be by our strength. Come on, clear this up. Fella. Won't be by our strength. I'm getting ready to move quickly, so I'm going to need this. There it is. Uh-huh. Now, let me show you something. Let me give you a scripture so I can give you this subject and get out of your way. In your Bible, turn to Jude Verse number three. You know it. Turn to Jude, verse three. Hurry, come on. Jude, verse three. Are y'all getting something? Yeah. Lord, are you with me? As I can deal with anything and everything if I know you're with me. But I'm dreaming and I'm waking up three, four o'clock in the morning, just crazy dreams. Don't even connect. Wake up emotional. I wake up, it, if, it, if it ain't me falling, it's a dog chasing me. If it ain't a dog chasing me, somebody shoot me. If it ain't that, it's a bunch of stuff that I wake up trying to put together to see if you're telling me something, but it don't make no sense. Waking up confused. I know you ain't the author of confusion, but of peace. And I, so this is disturbing my rest. We're hearing of wars and rumors of wars, Jesus said. He says, wars and rumors of wars, ethnos or nation shall rise against nation. It's not just one foreign country against another foreign country, but nation shall rise against nation or civil war. So first natural and spiritual, war, the climate of war is all of, we had three young black soldiers just shot down, amen, by drones in Iran. We, this morning we're, we're reading, we're gearing up to retaliate. They already issued, if you retaliate, then it's on and popping because we stand on business. And so you can sense it, you can feel it. There's already war over here. We're funding war over there. There's war everywhere. So if it's in the natural, why are we wor wondering why there's so much warfare in the spirit realm? We're in a climate of war, and this requires wartime war 
war-minded soldiers that realize that it is what it is and I've got to take a stand now. In Jude, let me hurry up. In Jude, the third verse, it says here, it says here in the King James, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, it says of your common salvation, it was needful for me. Say necessary. I'm hurried. It was necessary for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should. See, I had, I had to do this. It's needful. It's necessary. But what I'm about to tell you, it is through an exhortation. It's not a condemning, it's not, it's a, I'm, I'm encouraging you because I'm encouraging you to do what's already been placed in you to do. You don't have to conjure this up. There's something in you going to kick in if you yield to it. He says, I need, he says, and I exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which once, which was once, which was once, not twice, which was once. There's a faith that once was delivered, and who it was delivered to was saints. There's a one-time faith that came upon saints then, and I have entrusted you all to continue to have that kind of saintly faith. I need you to carry it on. In other words, he said, I need you to fight for the faith. Somebody say fight. All right, I'm hurrying up now. Let me get you, let me get you one more verse. One more verse. Let me get you one more verse before I just lose it. One more verse. Uh, I, need you, I need you to fight. You, you know this other one where we have to be oiled up, but we have to be armored up. Ephesians 6.10. I won't go through the whole thing. I'll just get to the finally. I'll get to the finally. We'll pause after. I'll get to the finally. And Paul deals with the saints at Ephesus, a tremendous revelation revealed to that saints. And he says here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, he said, finally, brethren, be strong, here it is, in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might is his. Look at your neighbor. I see you all ready to go. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stand and fight. Hallelujah. I know it ain't deep. I, I know it's not going to have you. Yeah, yeah but I, I, I came to tell you what the Lord told me to tell you. Now, now he said, I, I need you to stand and I need you to fight. I, I need you to stand and then I need you to fight. I need you to stand up. The Lord spoke to me and told me in the church, he says, to declare that this year I'm hurrying is a year of courage and trust. And he said in quotes, he said, I need y'all to expect miracles. I'm going to say it again. I know the cute church is telling you that it's 24 and you will want no more. 24, time to go. Hey Amen. They're telling you 24, the opening of the door and all this kind of stuff. But I'm telling you, he said that 24 is going to be a year where we're going to have to have courage and where we're going to have to trust him. And he said to expect miracles. He told me that to tell the saints that abandonment doesn't, that, 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 I'm sorry, that, that, that trials and trouble and strength struggle hallelujah doesn't equal abandonment hard times doesn't mean he's left you that he told me that this would be a time now that we've entered in and i'll bore you a little bit that the time that we're living in now he said tell the, my people that they're in training to trust me totally now i need that every word i'm saying to you is important he said that tell them that i am training them to trust in me totally a lot of us been talking about I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord. But you know that you can have, there are varying degrees of trust. I'm hurting. There are varying degrees of trust. You remember the man that brought his son to Jesus? And he said, he said to Jesus, he said, listen, he said, can you help him? He said, you know what? He, he, he got a spirit in him and it causes him to be thrown in the water and then thrown in the fire. In other words, what he's dealing with is taking him from one extreme to the other one. And he said, Jesus asked him a question. He said, how long has he been in this condition? He said, well, of a child. This thing has been going on since he was a child. Jesus asked a specific question that all of us have to deal with. He said, my God, he's been, he said, he said, listen, he said, he said, hey, do you believe that I'm able to do this? God of 
mercy. You didn't catch it. He had enough faith to come to Jesus with the, the child's condition. Faith brought him to Jesus and to, to, to ask Jesus after explaining to him the child's situation. He said that you would think that it would be enough faith that God can move for him to just bring the child to Jesus. And you, you would think that he brought him and he explained this been since he's a child. Here's the situation. I need, I, I, can, you can you deliver him? Jesus said, faith brought you to me but there's another faith that believe that I'm able to do why you came to me in the first place that's all right I'm getting out of here now he said now do you believe that I'm able do you believe that I'm able this man reveals something to us that we all need to take hey, take heed to he said help thou my unbelief I had enough faith to come to you but I didn't have enough faith to continue walking along with you Oh, there are many of us that have faith to come to God but do we have faith in the God that's going to bring us through whatever he's ordered in our lives to have to deal with and to understand that truly it is working together for our good trusting God is extremely difficult in an hour when we place trust in all kinds of people and they continue to prove to us that they are just people and it is our fault that we place so much trust in people Knowing that Jeremiah 17 says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. But cursed is the man who puts his trust in the arm of the flesh, puts his trust in the ability of man. Now listen, the idols that are coming down in America, yo, yo, keep, keep working on it, it'll clear up in a minute. The idols that are coming down in America, I need y'all to understand that it's this. We have idolized our preachers. We've idolized our reformations. The time for pastor worship, God says, is coming under the fire. The time for worshiping prophets and the prophetic, and have y'all noticed the gifts don't flow? like they used to flow 10, 15, 20 years ago because these things are fading. Why? Because everything is going down but the word of God. Ain't that what we say? But now, 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 now let's validate that. Everything's going down but the word of God. Y'all won't even wave at me. It's all good. And I'm telling you now that there, there, there's this worship of self, this worship. Watch this. The spirit of God said to me, he said, son, they are even now worshiping worship. How could he rock my world with it? My God, he rocked my world with it. He, asked, he said, they're worshiping worship. And that's why they don't care how they look when they worship. Uh, that's why they have on tight jeans with holes in the thigh, high heels on, face painted up. Say man. That's why they're coming here and they weren't lifting me up and they're looking all kinds of ways and where sexy has replaced being saved. Because if they were really worshiping me and they came into my presence, they would receive respond like Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. They would reply that I am undone. That I'm a man of unclean lips. That I'm a man in need of your healing, your cleansing, your sanctification, your fire, and your deliverance. Real worship is not just lifting hands in music melodiously playing while we sing in key and we squeeze a tear out and look cute while we're doing it. And then we're meticulous about patting our face because we don't want all of the makeup. Up on, uh, God, we don't want that to come off. And while we're sitting here now, we've been complaining about women wearing head covering so as to not offend the angels in prayer and prophecy. While the women are uncovering their head, the musicians are putting baseball caps on and earrings in their head, in their ear, and shaking their hair loose out of a man bun, draping across their shoulders. And they're talking about that they're worshiping the God of Isaac, Jake, J Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, listen, wait a minute. Now, please don't be upset, but you can't be phony and worship a real God. You can't be living a lie and worship him in spirit and in truth. You can worship him in spirit. The question is, what kind of spirit are you worshiping him in? Y'all don't want to talk to me, and I'm afraid that, that a familiar, strange spirit, can, a familiar, strange spirit has entered into the church. Now they're telling you people are standing up now 
and all of these forums, all of these women that are sexy instead of saved, that are wearing jean suits and tight this, and when they do wear a dress, everything's jiggling and wiggling, everybody's bouncing around. Why? Because we have dumb dogs that, that, that are lazy and love to sleep, and they will not bark. We have preachers and prophets who've heard nothing from God. They're speaking from their own dreams, from their own heart. That the to me here why we have folks on a watch that have had have stopped contending for the once faith the one time faith there ain't another faith coming there ain't but one faith it was delivered to saints and saints have to stand and fight for faith we ain't got time to fight the devil we think that's not my we we we, we we're misappropriating our fight. We're fighting the devil. We're fighting one another. We're fighting doctrine. We're, we're fighting preachers. Everybody on YouTube that has a ministry now, the new come up is attack the one preacher who they feel is in error. So I can be in error, but if I can articulate to you how much in error this preacher is, then I can gain some followers. But I came to tell you this, uh, that the Bible said there will come a time that they would not endorse endure sound, I need monitors, that they would not endure sound doctrine, but they would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and these teachers would turn their ears away from the truth uh, on the myth and fable. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying here? And I'm finding out that God said this is a time of miracles this year. Now, I'm not talking about conjured up, excitable miracles, church miracles, fake miracles, where people give you a courtesy fall and pass out. Ain't no power hits you when they touch you, but you don't want to embarrass the preacher, so you'll sit there and fall out. You'll sit there and let somebody proper lie to you and lay hands on you in the name of not wanting to embarrass them. But what you didn't understand is when they laid hands and spoke over you, if you said amen or didn't correct it, and it was a lie, then you broke one of the commandments. You done bore false witness. It is time for you to stand and fight. It's time for you to fight for that faith. Time for you to make maintain that pureness of God that he put in you when he first saved you. Unto the pure all things are pure. We gotta maintain that purity and work out our salvation with fear and trembling. The miracles that God said are coming in this hour will be miracles of necessity. They will see our God is natural. There it is. They're naturally super. In other words, you and I are spirits, but we, now it went back out. You and I are spirits, but we live in a body, so we're contained and we, and, and we have a limitation by time and space and distance and we're regulated by time. Got to be to work this time, that time. Got to do this. But our God is a spirit and he's eternal and he's outside of time. So what a miracle is to God is natural behavior. What a miracle is to our God is just what he naturally does. So it amazes us when blind eyes are open but it's not amazing to the one that created the eyes in the first place. Uh, Moses, go speak for me. Well, Lord, I st st stammer. I stutter. Come on, please, man. I stammer and stutter. I'm slow to speak. Uh, he said, Moses, I don't need them excuses. Who has made the mouth to speak? Uh, see, in other words, God said, you, there are no excuses because they... Yes, sir. There you go. Now you turn it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, so you turn it down. So he says, now watch. He said, to expect miracles. He said, to expect them. The Clark sisters told us in the 60s and 70s that I expect a miracle every day. I'm expecting a miracle every day. What a miracle is, is something that no man could do and no man could get credit for. And God says, I need y'all. Listen to me. I need you to stand and fight. Why? Because this is the year of courage and and trust. This is a year that I need you to expect me to be me. I need you to, to, to understand you're going to need me every single moment, every single day. Y'all taught me when I came out of the streets uh, that he keeps us from danger seen and unseen dangers. I'm telling you now that we're going to walk in miracles. Not walking in miracles just so that we can say all roads lead to my ministry. It will not be a miracle that you would gloat in, that you would sit around and get the credit for. 
It's going to be notable. It's going to be, it had to be God. It was nobody but my father in heaven that did it for her. He's going to see us through now. That's why you're being tried in your finances, tried in your marriages, tried in your body, tried in your relationship. But you've been under that so long, that don't even phase you. The one now is this fight between our mind, this fight that we can't articulate. We got cars to drive, clothes to wear, food on the table. We're blessed. We got loved ones. and got no reason to complain. And yet there is an internal struggle going on on the inside of us. The devil is a history major. He's bringing up all of our past. He's bringing up everything that we already repented about and trying to tell you that it's going to take you out on a technical. I'm preaching to myself. He's bringing up stuff that you done forgot about. He's bringing it up in your sleep. Bringing it up saying you're going to miss out with God. You're going to miss out. You done come this far and missed out with God. And I came to tell y'all this. We live according to Paul Washer. We live between two great days. Paul Washer said we live between the day that Christ hung before men and the day that men will kneel before God. That's all that matter. Not a birthday. Not when I was dying. Not the birthday. Not the hyphen. And now my death day. What matters is the day. Amen. That Jesus hung up on that cross. And the day that every knee shall bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Y'all taught me when I came out the streets. You taught me that you dare not trust in the sweetest fame. But holy lean on Jesus name. You know my trust is in him. My, 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 my patience. My confidence. My endurance. Everything is in Jesus now. You know what I've been preaching? I've been preaching a simple message now. I've been preaching Christ and him crucified. I'm leaning and dependent upon what he said in this word. Is there anybody going to help me preach here? I'm talking about the Jesus that helped Daniel go to sleep in the lion's den. That helped Peter go to sleep in prison. I'm talking about that Jesus himself who slept during a storm. I'm talking about a peace that's ridiculous. Anybody ever experience a this ridiculous peace that don't make no sense? It's a passive all understanding. It'll keep your mind. It'll keep your body. It'll keep you emotionally. What well, is called a perfect peace. Jesus gave a distinction. He said, I don't give you a peace not as the world giveth. Not as he does a peace that comes from the world. And it's a false sense of peace. Because they're going to scream peace and safety. Then he said sudden destruction. Peace. You know, like you got a hundred thousand in the bank. Peace. You know, like your marriage is fine now. Peace. You know, the doctor just told you you're fine. But I came to tell you that there could be a Job trial. One day everything could be wonderful and then fire could fall and consume your resources. That can mess up your body, give you smallpox. That could get all of your children assembled into one house and then they all die. Then your wife who should be encouraging you, her advice is curse God and then die because she knows that moments you curse God, that's what happens next. You're going to die. You're going to have to understand that things can change in a moment. Babylon the great, uh -huh, that caused the nations of the world to be drunk with the, with the wrath of her fornication. That Babylon the great, the Bible said is going to fall in one hour. The judgment of God is coming and one day we'll wake up and everything that we've known as peace and security, now nine one one help. Y'all ain't talking. You don't believe it. But just three years ago, 194 nations around the world agreed to put on masks and to get you to get a clot shot, to get you to get some secret sauce. Hallelujah. Some serum, some serpent serum. Talk to me. The harm in the arm. And they told us that our, our trust should be in the science. Here's the problem. I would trust your science, but I have an omniscience God. He's a Omniscient, which means he has all knowledge. He's omnipotent. That means he's got all power. He's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere at one time. I'm trusting in him 
now. Let me tell some of y'all something that's been called to preach. Get over your feelings. I'm telling you, if you've been called, God ain't revoking the calling. He ain't taking back his calling. If you're sitting there calling on the name of Jesus, your struggle is to promote you. Your struggle is to keep you humble because we're between Ichabod and the latter glory. It's a transitioning. Ichabod, that's what's coming to church. The spirit of the Lord has departed. It's preceding the latter glory. So if you can endure the Ichabod for a few short moments have I forsaken you. But for great, great mercies will I gather you. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, what's happening? We're being nailed to the cross. God said it ain't your gifts. It ain't your prophetic. It ain't your ability. It will not be by you. You'll not get the glory. The glory of the latter house tells me not to worry about what I'm to say because I'll be brought before magistrates. I'll be brought before great men. He said don't worry about it. Don't meditate on it. It shall be given unto you in that very hour. I'm telling you now if he's anointed you, don't worry. Whenever God gets ready to speak through you, he's going to speak through you and declare, hey man, the works of God and the power of God. But we've got to make up in our mind that we can't worship no preacher. We can't worship no church. We can't worship no reformation. We can't worship TV preachers. We can't worship worship. We can't worship praise. Did you hear me? Have y'all seen the church lately? Have you seen them lately? Somebody gets up and performs. And while they're up performing, everybody in the church is recording with their cell phones. And the Lord said to me, he said, you know what? He said, anytime you have public, you have public worship, if it's not preceded with private worship, it becomes a performance. And he said, these people honor me with their lips and they worship me with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. I wish I had somebody in Jacksonville that would help me preach. I got about five minutes and I've got to get out of here. Now there's four steps to trusting God. Now, now when I say God, let me clear that up. I mean God, Yahuwah. I mean the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let me clear it up. I mean the God that was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. I'm talking about creator, Elohim, say amen. You got to declare which God now. People are calling on God, but is it the God of this world? I'm talking about the God that without him was not anything made that was made. Male and female created he them. The God that by him all things consist and exist. Are y'all going to help me here? I'm talking about the God that anointed Jesus. He went about doing good, healing them that was sick and oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? There are four things that's going to help us continue to absolutely trust him in times of despair, in times of lack. We may be in soup lines, but I know you don't want to hear that. I know you don't want to hear it, but I heard the Bible say that my God, amen, shall supply all of my need. You didn't catch it. He didn't say supply all of your want. We've been throwing more food away. Amen. To me here, America is spoiled. You and I are spoiled. The audacity to sit up mad, and we threw a whole plate of food out yesterday. Sit up here mad, and got three and four closets worth of clothes. Sit up here mad, got three cars to drive. The devil is a liar. There's coming a testing time that God said, "I want to see who's following me for the fishes and the loaves, or but for those who are following me because they want." me because they want to walk like me. They want to walk in that same favor, that same anointing, that same power, that same obedience. They want the same mind. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ. Being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but nevertheless he humbled himself and became obedient even to the death of the cross. I'm telling you this is a 
time where the wheat and the tares are being separated. This is the time where God is refining the faith. He wants to see who going to stand. Who going to stand up under the weight. Who going to stand up under the lies. Who going to stand because your past is blemished. Let me tell you what to tell the devil. Tell them all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let him know that I've been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. That I am forgiven. That I am set free. And Galatians 5 1 tells me to stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made me free and be not again entangled with the yoke of bondage. What are you doing, preacher? I'm standing and fighting. I'm standing for the Lord. I'm standing saying I refuse to compromise and adjust my pronouns to fit this dangerous society that is telling me that I can't call a little boy a little boy that's telling me I can't say yes man I have to be gender pronoun sensitive y'all ain't trying to help me come on if I perish come on let me perish a whole lot of people are going to back up as this pressure builds but the Lord told me I'm coming in a minute now the Lord told me he said number one trust me. You have to first know that I am. You got to know that he is. Hebrews 11, 6 says, now faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of not the things not seen. The Bible tells us when we get down here in verse number 6, he said, he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently gently seek it. Could y'all help me here? High five your neighbor. High five him. I'm a preaching five. High five him and tell him he is. Yes he is. He is. Just who he said he is. Uh -huh. Yes he is. Now under him that's able to keep me from falling. To present me spotless before the throne of mercy. Now under him the old man the dominion and power. Yeah. Y'all gonna help me here. The Bible said there's a power that's at work in us. The Bible said that we have a treasure that's in an earthen vessel. The Bible tells us, it tells us this. He said, number two, knowing his heart towards you. That's Luke 12, 32. So first, if I come to it, I got to know who he is. And then I got to know his heart toward me. That if my hairs are numbered, then the God that I serve, I'm an heir of God and a joint heir. I not receive the spirit to fear again the spirit of bondage again to fear I don't have a bondage of fear no but we receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry out a father and he's such a father every time I see my wife or one of my daughters plaiting and braiding the hairs of my grandchildren say hey my son's got that my wife goes through and scrubs his scalp goes through and greases his scalp every time I see that I start looking up to the father and I say thank you Lord because all of the time you're meticulously numbering my hands y'all didn't catch that I take the time every day it falls out I wait for you to take the wig off because I ain't counting wig hair I'm counting real hair y'all ain't got to hear me every time you brush pick and call hair comes out recount that means this you're the apple of my eye shout yeah I put my investment in you I'm going to see it through being confident of this very thing I began to work I'm going to perform it to the day of Christ Jesus I need you to stand and then fight that's all I need you to do I need you to throw a rock David and I'll provide the accuracy and the power I need 
need you to swing. I'll provide the power. I need you to stretch out. I'll open the Red Sea. Y'all ain't talking. I need you to march and I'll make the walls come down. I need you to rest and I'll shut the lions up. I need you to step in the fire and I'll quench the fire inside the fire. I need you to oil up and I need you to armor up to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. If I'm with you, I'm more than the world against you. Lord have mercy. The third thing, he said, giving up the results. Give up your control over the outcome. Number one, know who he is. Number two, know his heart towards you. Number three, give up the control of the outcome. Ephesians 1.11 says he worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Are you good? Then the steps of a good man are ordered by God. Trust him with trouble. Trust him with the pain. Trust him with the confusion. You Negro still won't even wave your hand. That's all right. What you gonna do, preacher? In these last days, I'ma do what the Holy Ghost said. I'ma stand. Stand, stand. Yes, sir. I'm a stand and fight, but I ain't fighting my neighbor. I'm not fighting my friend. I'm not fighting the preacher. I'm not fighting the doctor. You know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish my course. A few more days. Y'all gonna hear me. Say these words. Say these words. I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. What's the fight? I kept the faith. Yeah. Finished my course. And assuredly, there's a crown laid up for me. But not only for me, but everybody who loves the appearing of the Lord. How many waiting on it? How many can't wait to this corruptible put on incorruptible this mortal put on immortality until then I'm a fight I'm a do what's right a lie is a lie the truth is the truth somebody help me preach throw your hands up and say fight Somebody else say fight. Hang Fight. Fight. Until I drop the devil back to his place. Fight for my rights. Fight for my faith. Fight that I continue walking in the doctrine. The sound. Number four. He said, if you're going to trust me, believe I am. Believe my heart. Trust me with the outcome. And the last one is patiently wait on me. Say, hey, I waited on the Lord. He delivered me from a horrible pit. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I heard Job say, I waited till my change come. Stay there. Don't get off it. I don't care what the church is doing on Facebook. I don't care what the church is doing on YouTube. Hold fast to that which is right. Hold fast. Say it. Hey. Hold on to holiness. Cover your body. Cover your mind. Cover your children. Say it. Hey. Continue to cry out to God. Continue to bring tithe. Continue to bring offering. Continue to serve. Continue Continue to sing, continue to worship, forsake not the assembly of yourself as many have done. Y'all ain't talking. Hold on, child. Change is coming. The glory of the latter house is on the way. But endure 
Ichabod. He got to dry up the church to find out whose hearts are perfect for him. Can you bless him when you're under pressure? Can you bless him when the bottom fall out? Can you bless him when you don't have it? Can you bless him when you're hungry? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Say hey. I got to leave you. Shout hey. I'm going to stand and fight for what's right. I don't care. The lights off, church. The feel me, church. The growing weed, church. The rap music, church. The homemonger, church. The tight jeans, church. Say hey. The crooked bishop, church. The, mon- the polygynist, church. Where you can have a wife. And three in the pew. And two in the choir. Say hey. The lukewarm, church. I ain't for me. Follow peace with all men and holiness without. No man shall see God. Holiness is right. The way is tight. Now is the way. Say hey. Straight is the way. The Greek word for straight is suppressed way, oppressed way, tight way, wearied way. That I might know him, not just in the power of his resurrection, but there's a knowing of God that only comes in the fellowship of his suffering. Until I was afflicted, I went away. I went scary. I strayed away. I went contrary. Until I was afflicted, but now I've learned obedience through the things I've suffered. Don't nothing matter but one thing. That's what man. Take the ministry. Take the cause. Take everything. But take not the Holy Ghost. Come on. He's the one that helps me fight. He's the one that helps me do right. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such. Communion. Having a form, you can do a whole lot with a form. Yeah, before you got that house you live in, you had to fill out a form. Before they issued the EBT card, you had to fill out a form. Before you got your driver's license, you had to fill out a form. Before the job would pay you, you had to fill out a form. Say yes, but there's a problem in the church. They will have a form. All they got is a form of God. All they got is an incomplete application. All they have, say yes. Well, wait a minute, baby. Why you ain't got the stamps? Why you ain't got the insurance? Why you ain't got your social security check? What's happened? I don't know. Why they taking so long? But wait a minute, daddy. I looked in your room. And on the dresser was the form. You never turned in the form. You're looking for results, but still have the form. Accept your righteousness. Exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. You'll in no eyes turn in the form. Stop being phony. Stop playing with God. Stop trying to twist his word. Stop trying to turn the house of prayer into a house of lust and lies. Stop trying to tell me that I don't have to cry. That I don't have to cry out. I don't have to cry out. And I don't have to cry up. Because I heard the Bible say that he that soweth in tears shall 
shall weep in joy. Say yeah. When the woman came to anoint Jesus' feet, the Bible said she cried and then dried the tears with her hair. But the book of Psalms tells us that you've taken my tears and put it in thy bottle. She couldn't have cried enough tears to clean off the dust and the sand from between his toes. What they did back then, they kept tear bottles. And when they would cry, they would put tears inside of a bottle. So when Jesus came, she poured out not just today's sorrow. She poured out years of sorrow. There's some people in my family I've been praying for for years. The devil told me, give up all them. They don't want to be saved. 30 years you've been praying for them and they're still getting high just let them go and I said to myself I ain't praying no more but the Holy Ghost you know the fighter in us I said the Holy Ghost you know the fire in us the Holy Ghost reminded me prayer wheels keep on turning fire it keep on Burning. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, he want to give up too. Uh, but Jeremiah said, uh, I ain't saying no more. Uh, but Jeremiah, uh, leg went to moving. Uh, Jeremiah uh, was pacing around. Uh, Jeremiah uh, said his word uh, is in my heart. Uh, just like fire. Shut up in my bone. Yeah. If you got the Holy Ghost, you've turned into form. You got the power. Say power. Say power. For as many as received him to them gave him power. Leave them people that have a form and hang out with people that's got power. Say power. It's late, it's late, it's late. Folks looking for results from the Lord, but they ain't turned in their form. You still, you still want to have a side piece in times like these. I mean, we arguing over hand coverings. We arguing over submitting to them that have the rule over us and do it in a way where it don't grieve them because that will be unprofitable for you you still talking about your preacher and still here let me speak for me anybody under my ministry that has something negative to say about me if I did something to you come on to me let's work that let me say I'm sorry but if I ain't did nothing to you what is you worried about take it to the Lord in prayer. if I ain't right just like if you ain't right, he going to get us all. That's it. That's it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But my suggestion is, if you can't get off of whatever spirit got you not liking your leadership, I got a suggestion. Go to them. After you go through them, if you still have that feeling that can't keep your mouth off of them and you keep coming to church here, I'm going to suggest... You go to that leadership and say, I can't stay here. I would appreciate it if you can give me the right hand or foot of fellowship. I, the church is the only place, only place where folks will stay and complain. You said, I ain't true on my job. I complain all the time. That ain't true. I complain on my job. The difference is you complain to an extent on the job. Meaning, you won't never tell the boss your complaints. Or people who you feel will tell the boss. You find people like you. Because misery, love, company, bird of a feather, evil communications 
whore ups. Be careful lest there be found in you a root of bitterness springing up whereby many cancer will spread. Many be defiled. You're not going to win with your mouth. We win on our knees and this is the only army that stands and fights on their knees. When I tell you stand and fight, folk think about standing on two feet. When he says having done all the stand, stand you therefore, he wasn't talking about standing on your natural feet. Standing on the promises and the principles and the ordinances and the laws. Because if the wages of sin, Romans 6, 23, if the payment for sin is death, separation from God and eternal separation from him, right? Right. So if the payment for that is that, and then I understand this. Wait now. So wait. So if that separates me from God, then I need to know what is sin. Well, what is sin? I would not have known sin but by the law. So how would I know by lust except thou said Thou shalt not covet. I was talking to the saints Wednesday night about a message. What was the title of the message? Man? He nailed it. I could dance right now. I got to go. I don't never have enough time when I come to the group. He nailed it. Taking these ordinances, Colossians 2.14, these ordinances and these laws. And, and the Bible said, he, having nailed them to the cross, nailing them to the cross. Peter said he bore our sin. Isaiah said he was wounded. See, that, I'll go back to preaching when I hit that. He was wounded. I transgressed. Bruised all up. Our iniquity. Chastisement of our peace. He got whooped for our disobedience so we have perfect peace. Not as the world giveth, but as, as he gives it. Because if, if I keep my mind on him, somebody holler, stand and fight. No, you didn't holler, stand and fight. He'll keep those in perfect peace whose minds are what? All the enemy wants to do is distract, to derail so you miss the call of the bridegroom. And he wants you dry with no oil somewhere talking to your dry mouth. Armored up ain't enough. If you got a rusty armor, it ain't going to do his job. God said we need to be armored and oiled up. I said he nailed it. Now watch in, 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 in gymnastics, when they do their floor routine, flip, 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 shh, flip, flip, flip. And if they land flush, the announcers say, she nailed it. And the landing determines if you get a 10 or a 9, how you land. It's not how high we jump in the church. It's how straight you can walk when you land. It's not the floor routine. It's the landing. When the Lord gets through knocking us and letting us go through all these trials, where will you land? We discovered, and you might do more, I discovered 667 sins in the Bible. I put them up on the screen in, in groupings of 25. And I said, y'all want to know why Jesus had to come? Y'all think it was just fornication, adultery, smoking, and drinking. Because that's all they preach in the church. Ain't nobody talking about not letting the sun go down upon your wrath. Ain't nobody talking about the pillow talk that'll get Samson's hair cut off. Ain't nobody talking about being nasty, greedy, spiteful, gossip that separates chief friends. Six things the Lord hate. Seven, the old proud look. You know how we, you know, how, you know. That's a walk. You, you know, most of y'all here bilingual, and you got three, three personalities. You bilingual, three personalities. Most of y'all talk on the. Um, good morning. How's your day going? You've reached Deborah. How can I help you? And then get home, and turn into a whole nother creature when they ain't done clean the house. Who? Why? Where y'all at? Where them chilling at? You just went from Deborah, hello, to where them chilling at. And you got three personalities. The way you are at church, the way you are at home, 
and the way you are at work. Depart from me. Why? Who are you? You didn't catch that. How can the God get up and justifiably say to people, depart from me, I know you not, when you know everything? Because he don't mean he don't know you. He means, I don't know this person that you've betrayed. Your focus was on power and not on relationship. 667 sins, I provided probably about 700 scriptures. We're going to walk through it. And I scrolled up the first 25 and say, so, my God, oh, and that's when you see a little tear come out. And I scrolled, and it went from 25 to 75. And he said, whoa. Brother Kelby on the weapon, he said, man of God, I thought when you got to 250, you was about to stop. And then I scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. When I got to 600, elders were slouched down on that chair. Got all the way to 667. When I finished in there, we said, he, he nailed it. He, 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 he nailed it. He hit the nail on the head. Because ain't no way in the world that I could do this without him. If you couldn't save yourself, how you going to keep yourself? You, 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 you didn't catch me. You think you keeping yourself. Now, before you get my picture, but the Bible says work out your salvation. With, I, I listen, listen, listen. John 15 says without him, we can do. Y'all ain't going to help me. It's quiet here now, right? Okay, watch this. Watch this. He says, he, look, look, I got all to keep those who want to be kept. I want to be kept. But count it all joy, not when the Mercedes is in the driveway. Count it all joy when you. You, 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 let, me, let me show you. Let me show you something. That means pray. We about to get on this altar and cry out to God. I pray. Listen, child, we prayed four hours in the church the other day. Lord, I, how many folks be bragging? I fasted. I fasted three weeks. That's a form. You don't feel. You don't feel about something. You're gonna try to take the God to earn righteousness. You tithe cumin and mint and leave the other undone. Y'all ain't talking. Justice, mercy. Watch this. We pray, we pray, we pray. Check this out. Romans 8, 26 says, we know not how to pray as we. But the Spirit of God, watch this, I'm closing, make it. Oh, God, come on, Zion. The Spirit of God, make it. You know, David said, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still water. Y'all, y'all ain't talking. You know what he do? He anoint my head with oil. You know he prepare a table for me in the presence of my head. You know what he do? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Because the Lord is, is my shepherd. And I lack for nothing. Y'all not talking to me. So he says, he maketh intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that knoweth the mind of God. He intercedes, he maketh intercession. On behalf of the saints. So he intercedes according to the will of God on behalf of the saints. Saints earnestly contend for the faith that once was delivered. You didn't catch it. The Holy Ghost prays what should be prayed through the saints because they are held accountable to fight and to stand up for what's right of the faith. They ain't no other faith coming. So the book of Acts faith should be maintained. If he healed then, he going to heal right now. If he delivered then, he going to deliver right now. It talk to me, you. I'm done with this. My time is over. I, this, right? I was talking to my wife the other day. And I started crying. Because I know some of y'all see this stuff that is going on in our churches. Not our church. I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about. They're parading around a clown show, and it is by design to, to make our Christ Jesus a joke so that it lessens our effectiveness when we witness mockers and scoffers are going to come. I'm done. Watch this. Watch this. 
I was thinking about it. And I, I said, babe, I said, I started thinking about my old bishop from Kingston, Jamaica, Bishop Bell. High yellow preacher. And I seen him walking in the church one day. This man designed beautiful sealers in the church. He was built with his hands. And he was walking in the church. And he drove a Lincoln, but I was joking. I said, man, it looked like you driving a Chevrolet. He said, why? I said, because you shoveling one and laying the other. And he started laughing. And he was walking in the church. And he was dragging one leg. And he looked up at me. <clears throat> and we made eye contact. And he said, son, once a man, twice a baby. And he drug his leg home like this. And I started thinking about that old man dragging his leg. And I started thinking about my mother and the Lord, Nellie Mae Blake. That was from Sanford, Florida. You talking about preaching, just talking about home and pastors. And I started thinking about the old saints that reared me. And I started crying. I said, babe, I said, if they were alive today, would they have seen this stuff? What was going on in the church? And I was overwhelmed. this gospel if I could have a conviction on what my bishop and elect lady would think about what's going on in the church today I took it further and I took it to the throne room to our holy God Everybody in this room has come to a place in your life and said, I need you. Yes, Lord. I have had and I can't take it. Children, the baton has been handed to you. Don't let it go. Shouldn't have taken it. When culture becomes greater than Christ, when sexy replaces saved, when imposters say they are apostles, when masters say they are pastors, when puppets say they are prophets, when leeches say they are teachers, when opportunists say they are evangelists, point to yourself and say, and not in here. You are a holy people. A set apart people. Look at this thing. Nation will rise against nation. The Bible said we are a holy nation. There will be internal conflict in the church. The weed and the tear that they look you know what's so sad? And I grew up with preachers. Preachers that was nine and ten. And then grandma and granddaddy built the church. They grew up preaching holiness. And it's so in them, right? Grandmama, granddaddy dead, mama dead. Now they 50 and 60 year old preachers. Grew up in holiness. And what's bad is they still preaching holiness. Because it's in them. But they're preaching holiness. But what is manifesting around them is anything but holy. There are people preaching holiness out of habit. 
that you've abandoned the lifestyle. And Jesus, the Bible says, by their works, they've denied me. Are y'all following me? I'm praying, Father, please let my life. Listen, listen, I'm done. I got to come get it back. We got to. I can't try to impress you with a resume of what I did, blinded eyes open. I've seen them do some things to me. We said to me, I prophesied this and I said this. I had to catch myself always running around. You got preachers now all on YouTube pulling up old clips of when they prophesied something. Are you trying to validate yourself as a prophet? Because what's coming next after the validation of what you said in 2016? Because it's come to pass now. You know what's coming next, right? I need 17 of y'all to send me $1,700. Who do we think we are, man? Who do we, why are you jealous? There's somebody buy a pasta Johnson cup. Ah, what is wrong with you? This is where we are and on the precipice of the judgment of God and Jesus returning that we worrying about who preaching? If it ain't the Holy Ghost, leave. I don't care what container is speaking. care about none of the titles or none of that the battle that I'm under man not one time has my my struggles ever yielded because I'm an apostle by the will of God you think you think that when the enemy is fighting me that I throw up that I'm an apostle to the enemy folks be tripping man that I go to you I go to I go to Trump I'm coaching. Try that. Try that and see how that works. Yeah, but one thing he respected, that's the blood of Jesus. Slim and the supreme angel said, I'm going to stay under, but the devil can't do me no harm. Listen to me. If the enemy is fighting in your sleep, accusing, bringing up your past, warring against couple of things. He's supposed to do that. Number two, it means you ain't running with him. And number three, it means that our God signed the paperwork and told him you have permission to test us. And he's standing back going, you can touch her, but this how far you can go, you can't kill her. Because the bet is he'll make you curse God to his face. But in all of these trials, you still maintain in your integrity. You ought, to, you ought to rejoice. You still come in the church. You still giving God praise. Y'all ain't talk. The devil told you to throw the towel in a long time ago. And the problem for some of us, we threw the towel in and an angel of the Lord caught it and, and threw it back and said, wipe the sweat off your brow and expect miracles today. Somebody jump up on your feet and shout out. I'm expecting miracles. God is going to work in my life. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm bringing the elders for communion. No, 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 no. See, I'm done. I'm done. Everybody in this place go to just giving him some glory. Go to thanking and praising him the day that you're standing and fighting. I'm going to keep doing what's right. Come on, I'm not going to let my elders down. I'm not going to let my mom and them down. I'm not going to, I'm going to go further. I'm not going to let the apostles down. I'm going to go a little further. I'm not going to let my Jesus down. He handed me the baton of holiness and I'm going to hold up the standard. If it costs me my life, don't give up praying. I know it's been 30 years, but keep on praying. The affection of fervent man, the righteous man availeth much. Come on, trumpet in Zion, Jacksonville. Let your voice be heard in the heavens. Let your voice be heard in the earth. Oh, God. You're trying your people for the purpose 
of fine-tuning their faith. The trying of our faith being much more precious than gold. You're bringing us to a place of absolute trust. We've been coming, but now the question will be asked, believest thou that I'm able to do this? You've been coming to me, but do you believe that I'm able now? Faith that brought you this far, faith is going to lead you on. Faith has brought you to me, but there's another faith that says I can bring it to you. Faith said to come to the deliverer. The other faith says you're delivered. Hallelujah. Everybody stand that can stand all over this place, please. I'm done. My time is done. I kept you long enough. It's easy to preach and I could preach till tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I want y'all to stretch across the aisles today. We always come to this altar and it's a beautiful thing. But I want you to make an altar right where you are right now. Stretch across the aisle and join up with your brothers and sisters. Let them feel the warmth of touch. Come on, don't let anybody not be within the clutch. Whatever you agree, two of you as touching. That spirit and touching in the natural. Come on, stretch and find somebody else. Stretch down to these young men right here. Put a hand in somebody's hand. I need you, you need me. We're all a part of God's body. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Elders, we need you in the house. Mothers, we need you in the house. Your hugs. You don't know, sometimes you hug somebody and just get a suicide spirit off of them. You don't know what it took for somebody to make it here today and they, they got their suit on but they just a nervous wreck. And just to have you just, sometimes they just look at you and say, thank God, mother's still holding on. Look at her, she's going through physical and mother's still in here dancing and singing and praising God. It's, it's a strength. Elders, we need you. We need you. We draw strength one for every, every need supply, every, every joint supply. I want you to be, go to praying right now. Instead of you praying on the altar by yourself for yourself, I just want you to go to praying right now. All over this place. Come on, Trump. Y'all ain't no strangers to cry. Cry out now. Cry out now. Go to praying right now. Touch and agree right now. Touch and agree. Let the Holy Ghost lead you right now. Blessing upon them. Father, I'm praying for the family, for this mind. I'm praying, Lord. I'm praying. I'm giving. I'm having mercy. I'm giving. I'm giving out that I might reap what I've sown. I'm not praying about me today. I'm praying for my brother whose hands I'm holding. I'm praying for my sister whose hands I'm holding. Strengthening her body where she need healing, where she need deliverance. Father, if they're lost and they're not saved, please let them cry. What must I do to be saved? Father, help us to hold on and endure this judgment that's coming. In this time, we're now, they've replaced bitter for sweet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They say good for evil, evil for good right for wrong, darkness for light. Father, in the time that a man and a woman is going to be harshly sentenced for small misdemeanors, but they're going to let felony people go free. It's by your design, all these folks coming in this border, undetected immigrants, a Trojan horse, they're spreading all over the country. Father, we know it's by design to bring this nation to its knees, to humble itself, to give it one last chance to repent and cry out. Your judgment has come upon this land. But you said it wouldn't come to our dwelling. We're hidden in Goshen. We're hidden in the secret place. Come on, Jacksonville, please cry. Cry for me. Cry for your leader. Cry for your babies. Father, we cry in this place today. Some of us, Lord, our minds are so fought. We do love you, Lord, but it is a fight. We're not going to put on no religious garment and just say this and say that. Yes, the weak must say that we're strong. We're going to say we're the head and not the tail. But Father, we're going through it and we're trusting you through it. That if you're allowing it, it's because you're trying to make us weak so that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Lord, you're bringing us to a place of bringing our arrogance down. Bring our trust in our education, our money, our ability, our wallets, our own strength, our ability, Lord, our willpower, our know, our, our know-how. Our influence, you're breaking it all the way down that we're depending totally on you. This ain't no new teaching. We're supposed to always lean on you. And so we thank you today. We're like a sparrow, Lord. 
Your eyes are on us. You feed us. You clothe us. Our problem is when we start looking back at our past or we start having anxiety over our tomorrow. But you told us and asked us, which of you by worrying could add one cubit to your stature? Worry not for tomorrow sufficient. Today is the evil thereof. It's enough going on now. Father, we're going to live in this moment. Tomorrow ain't promised to us. Tomorrow ain't promised to us. Thank you today for life and health and strength. Thank you. Thank you for the money I have. Thank you for the clothing. Thank you for the people around me. Thank you for this church, this leadership. Thank you that I could feel my neighbor in my hand, that I'm aware of where I am. And when it's my time, it's my time. I ain't going to die one day too soon or one day too late. You love me so much, you prepared a, a place for me. It's already ready. And I trust you in this place. Father, give the people sweet rest. Please, tonight, let us sleep all the way through the night. Not wake up. Not wake up, Lord, our heart racing. Thoughts bombarding our minds. Something bad going to happen to our children and grandchildren. Thoughts that we're going to be outdoors. They're going to come take our house from us. Thoughts that we're going to jail. Thought, thoughts, Father, that we're going to die. Thoughts that we're going to be in a car accident. Thoughts, thoughts, Lord, that one day we're going to lose it all. Hard times don't equal abandonment. Please let us remember the saints of old. Let us remember the saints recorded in Hebrews 11 chapter. How they was too good for this world. Oh, Lord, how they had their children raised from the dead, but how they were sawn asunder. Lord, how they pilgrimed through the land. How they endured hardness, hardships. In the name of Jesus, do me one more favor. Loose that neighbor's hand and just lift yours and just give him about 10 seconds of adoration. Just, just you. Come on, right there where you're standing. Just love on daddy. I'm done. Let me get up here. It's late. Got to get out of here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just you and him now. Come on, love on him. Get strength today. Get some strength. Get some strength. I know you've been battling your mind, but you ain't crazy. You ain't alone. Where this anxiety coming from? Where are you thinking too much? You're overthinking. 90% of that stuff that you think is going to happen to you ain't going to happen. The devil been lying to you, playing with your mind. If you ain't saved in this place, and you want to be saved, I want you to say these words, and I want those of you who are saved to say it along with them. Let's all make this plea today. Come on, say, Father, here I am. Take me just as I am. I'm sorry for all my sinning. I repent. I'm going to stop my evil ways. I'm going to say, Father, here I am in need of a Savior. I thank you that your word declares that if I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that he is my salvation shall be saved it was done on the cross he shed his blood that my soul wouldn't be lost I accept this Jesus the Jesus in the Bible the Redeemer Jesus as my Savior and my Lord I'm saved I'm saved because I believe in the blood of Jesus. Clap them hands all over this place. Come on. We're going to remain standing. Now, I can't hug all of y'all. Remain standing. I know some of the mothers can sit, but remain standing. The rest of you can't. I can't hug all of y'all. But I'm going to ask you, could you hug somebody near you and hug them for me too? Come on. I can't reach them. Hug them for me. Hug somebody. Hug somebody. Love somebody. God is love. I better quit. Time
Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, that's not everybody. Hallelujah. We can't thank God enough. One more time, put those hands together real big. Thank God for the word of the Lord. Amen. On this evening. Amen. God using Apostle John. Amen. To minister the word of God. Amen. Unto us on today. Amen. We thank God.